psychologist friend of mine who is saying that the Christians are worshipping a sadomasochistic instrument of torture with a flagellated naked guy pinned on. This is a collective perversion. Joan of Arc. In her, in her childhood, she communicated with fairies. In early adolescence, she heard the voice of God. She had a schizotypal personality disorder characterized by behavioral eccentricities and anomalies of cognition. When she was brought to trial, the charges that were held against her included the clever question as to why God would favor the French to the English. This was not enough to convict her. The divine origin of her voices were questioned by bringing up her early communication with fairies. What finally did convict her was the fact that she wore men's clothes during battle. In her cell, she was tricked. They took away her women's clothes and left her only men's clothes. In order to cover herself up, she had to wear these men's clothes and was uh, convicted and executed. The king, whom she brought to the throne, canonized her in order to keep his credibility and his crown. Teresa of Avila, another interesting saint who had a direct line to the divine and uh, she disregarded the chain of the command which raised some eyebrows within the Inquisition. <coughs> they investigated her and she was urged to stop levitating in front of a nun. She started writing books to, books to prove that her voice is what Today, we would diagnose her with a neurological dysfunction. St. Francis squandered away his father's money, money on wild parties with dubious friends. <laughs> Until one day, exhausted by disease, he found refuge in a chapel. And there he heard the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God was socially accepted during this time period. <laughs> and now, these saints would be diagnosed with uh, several neurological dysfunctions. We can also see uh, in the representation of the, of the halo that some lucid painters have detected the problem in the uh, brain area. <laughs> that would give another light. Anybody recognizes this uh, cute rock star couple? <laughs> Anyone? Yeah. Who is this? Yeah. Who is it? Bada. Then, yeah, Bada. Bada and Ensley. So, um, pimp and prostitute dynamics. Yes, this is um, interesting. There was a movie that recently came out uh, called The Bada Mining Complex, and I think. Some facts were a little wrong. Um, what we want to look here, the typical dynamic between uh, the prostitute and the pimp is a um, dynamic of domination and dependency, uh, which was the case here too. Um, when uh, we think about, uh, how, are you familiar with the 68 movement in Germany and uh, this whole history? So it had a, a whole different uh, function, the 68 movement in Germany, um, because after the Nazi regime, the high ups in the government were um, put away in the Nazi Fizierung and came back to their exact same positions as judges and university professors and so etc. So. Um, was not uh, the Kaurutis, and they uh, unveiled this through investigative journalism. Now, they were not really part of that, but they were uh, a split group from this. 
And uh, what's interesting is that Ensign's father, who was a cleric, congratulated her on doing something against social injustice, which his generation had failed to do. This means that they were living in an emotional reality that was no longer valid. This was in 1968, and they um, were emotionally in a different time period. Interestingly enough, so let's see here. In the movie, he was portrayed as a uh, wacky, um, aggressive male, but he was a psychopath. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is a uh, mind wolf, and the interesting part also here is that Rika Mindwolf's daughter whom she dragged along into the underground with her other daughter. Later in the 90s, when uh, her mother was now dead, had um, accused the then foreign minister, Joschka Fischer, of being a part of the German terrorist group. So she, too, lived in a different time frame, a different emotional reality. And what's interesting to see here is that the whole left was uh, criminalized because of these people who uh, collectively committed suicide in uh, the high security prison of Stammheim. Uh, we could call them hardcore romantics with a death wish. Uh, nothing further more to add. <laughs> Jackson Pollock um, became very famous. We all know why he became famous. He was a genius and a drunk. He was a genius drunk. <laughs> <laughs> he had some uh, help with uh, Lee Krasner. He became famous. But why did he become this extremely successful? And the reason why he became extremely successful was that uh, the CIA um, made him that big. <laughs> so uh, when he realized that he was a pawn in the Cold War to show the Russians how free the American artists were, uh, he killed himself. This is Walter Benjamin, Walter Benjamin. <laughs> Sad story, I can't really talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> And here, a picture we could uh, think about, like this long chain of accidents that the Kennedys have experienced. I would bet if we would research in the family tree, we would find this, this had been going on for generations. Why a president, on the top of his career, gets the second hottest girl in history, and then he gets himself killed. And his brother makes in line, same thing, gets himself killed, etc. There must be some psychological reason for that. I can't really talk about Jimi Hendrix, that would seem blasphemic to me. <laughs> so, um, the statement that John Lennon said, we're bigger than Jesus was brilliant because um, rock stars or, or rock and roll at that time had a huge influence on um, a predominantly young uh, audience and the music industry was not controlled as it is now so um, rock stars had like this enormous impact that uh, could not be controlled And this is not the case today. Uh, we have uh, Wilhelm Reich, a thinker and psychologist who wrote books like Mass Psychology of Fascism and The Function of Orgasm. He was a Marxist thinker and uh, was ill-regarded during the McCarthy era. Um, they could not get at him because of his books. But what they could do, and also first before I switch to the next picture, the next image, I want to know who of you are um, familiar with the uh, acronym ODD? Anybody? 
Well, it's a new uh, identified uh, syndrome. It's called the uh, oppositional defiancy disease. Okay, it's not ADHD, so it's not people who <laughs> yeah, are okay, <laughs> opposing authority, etc. So what they got him with was uh, that he built this organ accumulator. So his life's work dealt with um, the human body, its energy, and um, the body and the human in society. He invented the organ accumulator um, where uni universal energy would be uh, collected. You could sit in it and receive it. Okay. So. Um, he built them and sold them via mail order. So this apparently violated some state laws and uh, some tax laws. So he was arrested. Now, um, both his par parents killed themselves. So, um, and I think that had a huge impact on him. Because during his trial, he uh, refused to have a lawyer. So he had like this self saboteur in him. He refused to get a lawyer and he told the judge to read his books. The judge didn't like that. And uh, he uh, was brought to jail, sentenced for, uh, to two years, and died after one year uh, uh, by a heart attack. And his books were publicly, publicly burned. Uh, yes, so this was the presentation icons on the couch.